Jackson? Hey, oh, let her go. Don't worry, this is fixable. But I can't come with you. Well, then I'm staying. Ellie. I want Joel to watch over. Oh, no, no, no. Bullshit, Absolutely. I'm Ellie. Ellie. She's gone too. Take her to the Look how many cameras they've got around them, dude. Capturing every little bit. Just cargo, Joel. Technology's crazy, isn't it, right now? How oh, they can do all this. Uh, until it has a good feel, and then we pass it off to animation to clean it up. Real life motions don't necessarily always translate into gameplay. There's something that's usually missing, so we have to, you know, maybe enhance the gesture or enhance the shoulder movements or uh, a breath that you want to be able to feel, but you don't really see it, so you can't really feel it unless you see it. Is everything all right? Yeah. yeah everything's fine. I could have him lean in here a little bit more, like this, take his hand down. When they're on stage, they don't necessarily have windows, you know, so that weight of, like, really pushing and leaning in is something that we would have to accentuate. You know, give him a little bit more weight on that turn or put his head down a little bit more. There's a lot of dialogue that gets said between the two characters. We have to bring that alive through animation and we have what we're using as gestures. Why would they mow down all these people? You can't let everyone in. If you turn off the sound, you'd know that they were talking to each other. And that really helps accentuate the relationship that the two have together. There's, we have certain animations that play in the beginning of the game on Ellie. She's traveling with Joel, who she doesn't really know. There's a lot of gestures to make her look nervous, just her overall stance. Later on in the game, they develop a relationship through the animation, not just the dialogue. You can see that she's more comfortable around him. If that reads well with the player, then, you know, we're doing our job. So clever. We want her to look scared when she gets a gun. We want her to look scared of the gun. See, if, if she's gonna aim, she wouldn't be like super trained aim. She would be more like some scared. It's, it's like time you were saying, dude. It's like the attention to details, all things. these little things. It's really just these little tiny build up along the way through the story to make you feel what they're out. wanting you to we feel and exactly how their characters are feeling in the game. On stage, it's just the or how you would feel in real life. It's just. Hand you know, all absolutely just so the attention to detail is just ridiculous. The performance that she was giving, and I watched just this section over and over and over again. So, this is our default phase where I can make everything super extreme and make her all squinty and angry, turn her frown down. I can open her mouth. Stick her tongue out. <laughs> it's listen, watch. Okay, where where's her mouth at this point? Like, is it open? Is it is she making like a grimace? About Tess, I, I don't even know. Here's how this thing's gonna play out. You don't bring up Tess, ever. Matter of fact, we just keep our histories to ourselves. We shoot all of it to just get the body motion, and then we we'll do a, sec a second pass with the cameras. The scene's playing back on an overhead projector, but it's also playing back on a monitor that's attached to my rig. Sean and I would go to the stage and motion capture the camera filming the scene, and so he would get a whole wide shot, a whole close-up for the whole scene. You know, you can change your lenses, you can use your standard 35, 85, 50s, whatever, all that sort of live-action uh, camera cinematography, you can apply it on stage. We make sure to go back in and add flaws we keep the confinements of the room so the camera can't go past a certain wall because then we have this cheated perspective. If the cameraman bumps into the wall, we keep it. You know, missing focus hits when you're pulling focus, going too close to a character and reframing those little moments in there. It kind of keeps it very cinema verite. If everything was too perfect, you wouldn't be able to put your finger on it, but you'd be able to feel it. It would just feel off. It's very much about grounding it, despite having you know, the option to do whatever we want. Being able to place the cameras anywhere we want after the motion capture gives us both advantages and disadvantages. The biggest advantage is it means that we just have to nail the best performances we can get and the luxuries that we can always swap it. The 3D world gives you limitless opportunities with, with cameras and movements, exposures, all that stuff. 
Most of these cameras are sort of set up like real world cameras. So we have lens, we have f-stop that will create the depth of field. Uh, we have aperture to, you know, set our film back and all that stuff. And a master, and then I have my close-ups, my open Fucking hell, I wonder how much some so of this software co access. costs, you know, what they use. Camera 30 at, at the 23.458, then I get that kind of weird, you know, bend. I wonder what sort of computers, the, the what, what powers the camera, it all. The more bend I get, which is, you know, doesn't look right. It doesn't look as, it looks less cinematic than if I do that, which flattens the whole thing. And, and I'm trying to also catch Ellie. Like if you scrub a little more, you know, catch her in the back here. So I want a sh you know, longer lens of that kind of stuff. Since I had only had experience working with live action before I got into video games, it was a kind of a cool adjustment to be able to have this extra flexibility in post, to swap a line of dialogue for something different, even though that's not what the actors said at that time, and to be able to still have a close up on them while they said it. You get to make it probably more perfect than you could ever make it in live action. How far are we gonna take As far this? as it needs to go. Where was this lab of theirs? Because our actors are both the voice and their body, they get to play, they get to try things, they get to work with our director to kind of come up with new ideas, or even our director will have a new idea on the spot that wasn't there in the script, but realizing when he sees it, oh, well, this would actually be better, this might feel better, and those changes all just happen organically there on the set. He could even lead straight into his thing. He's like, no shit. Yeah, Ty would want to do that. So we ran into our and drove cross country. Keep it pretty succinct. Like we got the bikes, rode them cross country. Come on. It's shocking to me that this is Neil's first time directing. There was a specific tone and a specific uh, approach that, that Neil and Bruce wanted to take with this. It just came down to there's nobody knows the story better than you. And then there's nobody that knows these characters better than you, why don't you just do this? He and I actually had a conversation about it. He says, I think I'm gonna try this my, myself and I'm not sure. Neil was fantastic. The floor is yours. Okay, so remember you've been running away from this turret mounted truck. If you come to this dead end, you're gonna look up and see a potential way out. And action. Let me check it out. His writing is honest, and it's dangerous, and it's natural. And I love his economy of words. He doesn't hear everything. I bet he'd be a rave. I bet he'd be a great book writer. I wonder if he's actually ever done any books apart from just like game design, like writing. It really is led by Neil's willingness to change and, and, and flow and decide something doesn't work, and he'll fix it right there in the moment. And it is... Uh, be a good novelist. Very foreign to, to the way that TV and film is done now, where everything has been micromanaged by the time you get it to the table read, and no one wants you to change anything, and everything's very precious and has been rewritten with notes from 20 people in suits, and you can't do that uh, just just uh, anywhere in entertainment these days. Yeah, I just I want to make sure I I think I swung too far over to to this way, and, and now it's it's a little bit of making jokes about it, and we need to bring it back to the center. There's one scene in the game where um, we see Joel um, not as a ruthless survivor, but as a father. I knew from the very beginning that he's going to lose his daughter. And uh, I just told Neil, I was like, when that day comes for us to shoot that, I need a heads up. About a week before, he said, it's time. We're going to do that scene. I was like, okay. Because I knew that I, I was going to have to go to this place that, that you don't really want to go to as an actor. You want to find some aspect of reality that you can um, empathetically draw from, you know? Troy and I were both kind of just like walking around for a while and just kind of getting into the, to the zone and he, and well, my grandpa died when I was eight. He was like my dad and so that, that's always what I use to get into that, that place. You know, I, I started recalling all those memories and starting pulling up all those feelings and they're just right, right underneath the surface. When I walked back in, everyone realized that something was different. They kind of like calmed down, you know? You could feel the energy just like drop a little bit more. It was brutal. <laughs> I just, I lose my shit. I mean, just completely break don't down. Do this, don't do this, don't do this, please, God, no. Oh, God, no. The sound stage was deathly still. It was the first take, and I felt really good about it. And it's like Neil said, "Okay, let's do it again." 
And so you do it again and automatically you feel like you're manufacturing because you're trying to go back to that place and you know, you've, you, you're in that actor nightmare of you know, trying to get back to that reality. And we go through it again in fifth and sixth and seventh take and I'm just exhausted. I'm crying between takes. And I'm looking at Neil going, this is really, really hard. And um, finally after like the eighth or ninth take, he said, all right, I think we got it. I was like, oh, thank God. And I went outside and I was just jacked up for the rest of the day. Just, just I mean, a wreck emotionally. But we got it. Then two weeks later, he calls me. <laughs> and he says, uh, so we need to reshoot a scene. I'm like, cool, what scene are we doing? And he just looks at me. I said, dude, don't do this to me. And you can either at that moment uh, throw your hands up in the air and say, fuck this and walk away. Or you can say, okay, this is an opportunity to get it more right. I'm like, okay, all right, yeah. you don't think you got it? I'm gonna show you that you got it. We've got it in the can. And so we go through it again, and it just feels fake, feels artificial. And Neil goes, go through it again. We start doing it again. And I'm getting madder and madder with each take. And finally, about the fourth take, <laughs> Neil comes over to me, and we, I love him so much, he goes, so I'm picking up on some resistance. I was like, you're damn right you're picking up on some resistance. We've got this in the can already and we're just wasting our time and we're wasting all this effort and energy. And then he started talking me through the scene. And he's like, what I need you to do is I need you to, to just strip yourself of all these ideas and I need you to hit this beat and this beat and this beat and this beat, which just makes it sound so mechanical and it's such an emotional scene. So we start going through it and literally I am mindlessly doing these things at this point. Okay. I know it hurts, baby. <laughs> I know. So I'm gonna lift you up. I'm gonna lift you up. I'm gonna get you over here. Come on, baby. Come on, work with me, please. God. Baby. Sarah. Sarah! Jesus. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. Come on. And he stops, he goes, now we got it. And I realized that the reason why I wanted that first take to work was because I wanted everyone to look at me and go, wow, what an actor. And that's not what the scene needed. Those moments where you just have to sort of calm your ego down and, and just go back and do your work. That scene actually works, not because of me, but in spite of me. And that really is the marker and, and definition of working with a true, truly good director. There are many like it, but this one is yours. Why don't you have a seat? Okay. Thanks, guys.